In this video, I'm going to instruct you on how to apply a negative pressure wound therapy dressing. We are going to be using a foam-based dressing with your traditional drape application over the top. Per your institutional guidelines, you would cleanse the wounds as accordingly per the guidelines of your institution. From there, you want to assess the peri wound area, apply skin prep around the peri wound area, and you want to ensure that you go about one to two inches out from the wound into the peri wound area to ensure that you apply protection. The skin prep does two functions. It allows for the drape to adhere better and also protects the skin from any shearing that it might incur or irritation from the drape being applied. One of the basic principles of negative pressure wound therapy is you never want foam touching good skin around the peri wound area. So the first item after skin prepping it would be take your drape, remove it from the package. As you can see, your drape's an eight by 10 sheet. Cut the drape in half. Then from here, each line represents one inch. So you need to cut three to four one inch strips. And the drape is removed by removing number one first off the back side. Then you can also go ahead and remove number two. And you want to window pane around the wound margins. This ensures if your foam is slightly too big, it does not come in contact with good skin. So you take the drape, walk it around there, flatten it out, then remove number three, then pull the tab. And I'm gonna continue this process until the entire peri wound is protected by drape. Again, remove number one tab, remove the second tab, and continue walking this around the peri wound area. And again, this just offers the protection for the peri wound area. So in case foam does come in contact with good skin, it does not cause damage to the good skin. Need about two more pieces for this. So this is the last piece I'm cutting for the window painting around the wound. I'm gonna line this up, go around the wound margins. Move number two. three. So now I have my wound window paint. I want to apply the foam media for negative pressure. When cutting the foam, you never want to cut foam above the wound base. Debris can fall into the wound and you should always cut the foam away from the wound base. At this point, I usually cut the general shot size of the foam and you want to ensure when you cut the foam that it touches the entire wound base. If it's not touching the entire wound base, negative pressure's benefits will not be applied to that area of the wound. So I cut the basic shape, then I kind of line it up with my wound and fine tune it. And this is a trial and error method. It's, I call it arts and craft time. And we want to ensure that I cut this foam roughly one to two centimeters smaller than the wound diameter. You do not want to overstuff the wound and you want to ensure the entire wound base is covered with foam. So I continue this process until it fits. And as you can see, I've cut that to fit my wound. And in case any foam does come out here on the peri wound area, touches intact skin, it will not cause any damage to that peri wound area. Again, one of the basic principles of negative pressure wound therapy is foam cannot touch intact skin. So we have cut our foam to fit the wound. We are going to apply a contact layer called Sorbac. Sorbac is a contact layer that helps protect the wound base from any adherence 
from the foam into the wound base. So when applying Sorbac, you do not want to crumple it up. You want to lay it out and you want to cut it the same diameter as your foam. So what I usually do is use my foam that I just cut as a guide. I kind of get a rough shape of it first. From here, I continue fine tuning it and cut it to fit. As you can see, this is just a contact layer. This is going to lay down in the wound base first. You just want to make sure it's flat and on the wound base. Then I'm going to lay the piece of foam right over the top of it and it acts as a contact layer only. Sorbet can also be used in tunneling areas and undermining areas also in the wound base. All you need to leave is a pigtail hanging out by about half an inch to touch in the foam and it'll provide negative pressure wound therapy. From here, we need to cover the wound base. We need to seal the wound base. So we go back to our transparent film. My recommendation is always to fill any cracks, crevices first with your drape. Do not try to cover the entire wound with one solid piece of drape if it's a difficult wound. Always cut a smaller piece. And again, I start with a one inch piece. I go to the most difficult area that I know is gonna be difficult to seal. So if there's a crack crevice here, I would cut a little one inch piece, take my thumb and actually push down into this crack crevice because I know that's where I'm gonna leak because again, negative pressure with wound therapy is nothing more than applying vacuum to the wound base. So then I'm going to cover this, keeping this all intact, apply my foam. When applying the drape over the top, do not compress the foam. The negative pressure device will compress the foam. All that can cause is pain and discomfort to the patient. So from there, I'll remove number three again. Pull the tab. Then from here, I can continue covering the entire wound base. So I come back to my drape. I'll cut about four inch piece on this wound simulation. Remove number one, adhere that to the wound. Again, I'm not pressing on the foam. Remove number two, walk that over. Then remove number three. And again, the wrinkles, anything along those lines will be pulled out during negative pressure. It's not, it doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing for negative pressure to be at work and be functioning correctly. What you just don't want to do, again, do not push on the foam during the drape application. Ensure the entire wound is covered with drape. Then after I have the drape applied, a good rule of thumb is to walk your finger around the outside of the drape to ensure that you have good adherence of the drape to the peri-wound area. From here, you lift and pinch the drape. So lift up, pinch, take your scissors, and you need to cut at least a dime size hole. This is where the port pad is going to be applied to apply suction to that wound base. From here, my negative pressure kit, I'll remove my port pad. The port pad is clear, you can see through it, so you can line it up exactly over the hole that you just placed. You remove the number one tab first, from the back side, exposing the adhesive. Some practitioners prefer to grab it on the port pad. That's what the tabs are here for too also. You can take it down, look through the port pad, and line it up over the now previous cut hole. Then apply the drape. From here is a piano cut, and you remove the backing from both sides. Then the tabs fold up and 
are removed and fold them flat, back flat. Then again, same way as my drape application, I'll take my finger and walk around the outside edges. At this point, you're ready to apply the negative pressure pump. Ensure both clamps are unclamped. Connect the lower lock device by twisting. Do not over tighten. Power on your negative pressure device. And as you can see, it's raisin like in appearance. It is pulled down. You should be listening for hisses, air leaks around the dressing. You can fill them at times. You can also use your stethoscope to listen for them. If any of these air leaks are present, you can cut a little piece of drape where the air leak is, and you can just apply that over the area of the dressing that experiences the leak. Again, the foam will look drawn down, it'll look raisin-like in appearance, and you can see it from the back side there too, it's completely compressed. This is your completed negative pressure wound therapy dressing application.